everybody welcome back to the channel if you have been following the news you know another 10,000 tech jobs have been impacted developers have been laid off uh, AI is writing code even faster than ever before and if you're a software developer you might be thinking hey am I next am I the next person who's going to get impacted and honestly you're not alone this is a question I'm being asked again and again on LinkedIn on my YouTube channel from software developers who are very, very worried about this whole uh, AI quiz, which is happening. So in this video, I'm going to tell you that, in fact, your career is not over. Your software development career is not like tech jobs are not finished. Anybody who's telling you that they simply do not know the reality of the market. In fact, I'm going to show you how this AI uh, like uh, boom which is happening, this could be the perfect time for you to pivot into cybersecurity and how you already have the skills to thrive in cybersecurity. So let's get started. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tamur Ijlal. I'm a senior security consultant with Amazon Web Services, and I made this channel to give advice around cybersecurity, cloud security, AI. So please do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video if you found it useful. So let's get started. So like I said, this whole video is about how you as a software developer can move and apply your skills into cybersecurity, but what, like how to do it? What's a structured way to do it? So why am I, why did I make this video? Well, honestly speaking, the reason is quite clear if you've been following the news, right? There have been massive, massive layoffs within the tech industry for the past two years. And usually tech used to be a very, very safe job. You know, you had a tech job, you were pretty much guaranteed a high salary and like a good job stability. But unfortunately, this whole AI boom is impacting tech very, very badly. So just recently, Microsoft, they laid off quite a lot, like thousands and thousands of people, you know, software engineers, product managers, even the director of AI, which was quite surprising to me just to show like where the whole tech boom is going, right? And on, unfortunately, software developers were impacted very, very badly. Most of the software development team, they were the people who were targeted I think around 40% it was software developers within Microsoft, which is quite surprising, right? So I can imagine why people are so worried about it. Even it's not just Microsoft, right? So Salesforce, one of the biggest companies in the world, even they were debating about how they should they hire software engineers due to the like gains which are they're getting from Agentic AI. Previously, you used, used to have like a software developer team, right? A project manager, and then you have like three, four software developers. Now with Agentic AI, you can literally have a team of AI agents and you can, they can keep on refining their works. A lot of people, you know, they say that, no, no, they can never write code as good as humans. I agree. But if if the code quality is, okay, it's not 100% uh, as good as a human. If it's 75%, 80%, do you think organizations are going to care? They're going to say, yeah, okay, this, will, this still is better than hiring like three full-time employees and paying them such a high salary. You have to look at it from that perspective. So this is how the world is changing, right? Uh, OpenAI, they are developing AI agents to replace software engineers. So this is one of the biggest use cases for agentic AI, for generative AI, which is developing code. That's why so many people are worried about their long-term career prospects and how like to move into cybersecurity. So the first thing I want to say before even I jump into how to like pivot into cybersecurity is your software skills are not wasted. Please, I want you to be, I want to be very clear. The amount of time and effort that you have put into becoming a software developer or software engineer, that has not gone to waste. Your technical skills are very much valid. And I'm going to talk about them, like which are the, what technical skills I'm talking about. You, as a software engineer, you have a massive edge if you decide to move into cybersecurity. Why? Because first of all, you have a very strong technical foundation that is always helpful, right? I mean, some of the best cybersecurity people I know, they started out as help desk engineers, just to show you how it happens. Uh, your problem solving skills, your, anybody who's written software, you know that 90% of the work goes into troubleshooting, right? You're going into like trying to figure out why the code is not working. Attention to detail, you need to have a good attention to detail in cybersecurity if you're going to apply that, like if you're going to move into it. Experience with DevOps. You, everybody knows that most of the insecurities are present in code. So you want to put in, make sure like the security is shifting left, put in those uh, controls within the DevOps pipelines and you have an insight into software vulnerabilities. I, I cannot begin to tell you how many cybersecurity people I know. What they do is they run a, like a DAST or a SAS or a secure code uh, software on code. They get a report. They don't even understand half of the findings. They just send it to the application team and the application team goes back and tells them, look, this is false positive. Why? Why is this happening? Because the software, uh, because sorry, the cybersecurity team 
they do not have that experience within software. They've never written code. So they do not know you as a software developer, you have a massive advantage. So I want you to understand all these skills that you have, they have not gone to waste. And in fact, they are very, very powerful within cybersecurity. Uh, and, but so you have to go about it in a proper way. What people do is I've seen that within software, uh, when they want to move from software development to cybersecurity, they choose the wrong career path, right? They said, I want to become, I want to go into a GRC governance, risk and compliance. Now, this person has never done anything around GRC and none of the skills which I've talked about before are applicable to GRC. So it's a wrong career path, right? They, they only saw the salary and they said, okay, this looks like a good career path. I'll move into that. So none of the skills that they had, it's applicable. It's not transitioning into a GRC career. And I've seen this happening many, many times. So identify the roles which give you the easiest transition into cybersecurity if you want to move into it. Well, some examples, I mean, I would recommend an application security engineer. So many cybersecurity teams, they lack people who have dedicated experience within application security. Somebody who can enforce the security controls within the code, within infrastructure as code, within Python, within DevOps. Similarly, DevSecOps engineers, they, they do a similar job, but so many people, they need DevSecOps engineers who have an understanding, a very deep understanding of code, how to write pipelines, how to shift security light practically, right? Uh, penetration testing, especially from the AppSec. If you have people who, uh, cybersecurity teams, they want people who can actually try to break into their applications, try to review the code and then break into it. You can become a freelance consultant. You can look at one of the big consulting companies. They're always looking for people who have experience within application security. So again, this is a very, very good career pivot. Uh, a cloud security engineer, the one, the thing that I do uh, most of all, of course, a cloud security engineer, a lot of your time is looking at infrastructure as code, IAM policies, automation, all of those things are very, very easy if you have a software development background. And lastly, a security architect. Here, this is slightly, uh, I would say a slightly different recommendation, but again, if you have experience developing code and looking at it from the architecture perspective, you, you can be a very good security architect. Usually this is not something I would recommend as a initial role, but later on, you can do threat modeling. You can take a look at application modules, all of those things. There are so many, all your experience with containerization, Kubernetes, you will not believe how valuable that is within cybersecurity. So that's the first step. Identify which of the roles map to you. And the next step is to get the relevant certifications. And the keyword again, being relevant, right? Uh, find out what career, do not do the certification first and then think about what career path is suited to you, right? So you have to look at, there. I have many, many videos around uh, cyber security certification path, so please check those out. But again, if you're starting out something like the CompTIA would make more sense. If you have like 10 to 15 years experience and you have a little bit of understanding of cyber security, maybe the CISSP is more beneficial for you. Or if you want to go into penetration testing, the certificate ethical hacker, the CES, right? I'm not, uh, there are so many uh, certification paths available, but again, please first find out what you want to do and then do the certification, not the other way around. Don't waste money and time doing a certification. And then you you do something like the C-Risk, which has to do with IT risk management and you want to become a penetration tester. Th those certifications do not tally, right? You should have done something like the certified ethical hacker, the OCSP, something like that. Similarly, if you want to go into the cloud, uh, which cloud and what sort of role are you targeting? If you're starting out, do something like, you know, uh, the AWS Security Solutions Associate, sorry, Solutions Architect Associate, and then move into the security part. I have a complete video series on that, which cloud security certification should you look at. So please check that out. But again, if you have just starting out in cloud security, don't jump to an advanced certification like the CCSP or the Kubernetes security specialist because you're just starting out, right? You're gonna make things more difficult for you. So do, do a beginner cert first, unless you have already have a very good handle on things like Kubernetes orchestration, then okay, then it makes sense for you to do that. But please choose the right certification. Okay, once you have done that, get hands-on with cybersecurity. Certifications alone are not enough. If you only have experience on software development and you did a certification, that is not enough. You need to get hands-on with cybersecurity. You need to roll up your sleeves and get dirty with cybersecurity, right? Security-focused projects are there. You can volunteer for security tasks in your current role. You can contribute to open source projects. You can go to freelancing websites like Fiverr, um, Upwork and try to find security work or you can reach out to people on LinkedIn 
and offer to do security work for free, everything to get experience, right? They are, additionally, there are online platforms like TryHackMe, HackTheBox. All of them offer you good hands-on labs and practical exercises. Or you can create a personal lab environment, right? Download a virtual machine, download Docker, or maybe you can do something like the Azure free subscription or an AWS free tier account. All of them will help you. They'll give you a cloud sandbox and then you can start playing around with them. But please get hands-on and then share this information. You know, when you're doing something around cybersecurity, share it on platforms like LinkedIn. Say, hey, I'm experimenting with these things right on Medium. Something which puts this information out there so people are aware that you're doing it. This is the age of social media, the age of building your brand. So when you're starting out in your journey, don't be shy. Share this information so that people are aware. Okay. Uh, step four. And again, this is a step, again, a lot of people miss out and they do, do not understand how valuable it is and how much time can be saved if you just do this step, which is finding a mentor. Find somebody who can help you on this career journey. You know? Like somebody who can accelerate your transition into cyber security. They will tell you, hey, are you doing this correctly or not correctly? Okay. Or, or they will tell you, they will tell you these are the steps you can take to immediately uh, reach this career path. They can cut down on your time tremendously. So seek out professionals in your field who can give you guidance, share insights, reach out to them on LinkedIn. Right, somebody you feel is very admirable and you like this person, reach out to him. What's going to happen? First thing is this, and they say, no, I don't have the time. But what if they say yes? They said, okay, uh, happy to talk to you for an hour, half an hour, and you can pick their brain, right? 90% of the time, people reach out to LinkedIn, say, please connect with me. I want to, uh, can you please lend me a job or do like that? No, don't do that. Reach out to them, tell them, look, I'm starting my career journey. Can you help me out or something like this? Believe me, a lot of people will reach out to you. This leads me to my again question. A lot of people then say, why don't you do it? I do do it, but simply put, I do, I, I'm 90% of the time, I'm very, very busy. I'm not able to help people to the extent I want to. That is one of the reasons I've made this cybersecurity career accelerator course also on Udemy. It's a very simple course. Everything I know about helping people get into cybersecurity from your LinkedIn profile, from your CV, from finding your career path, getting experience without a job, all of that I have put into this uh, course. I'll put the link in the comment section. So check that out. Okay. Because I, I know people are going to say, but please, <laughs> I want you to mentor me. Simply put, guys, I don't have the time as much as I would love to mentor everybody. Um, my personal and professional life is so busy. I'm not able to give it the time that I want to and help people. But this course is the next best thing. Everything I know, I have put into uh, this course. So I hope you've understood now and you've gotten a better idea about how to move from a software development career to cybersecurity. But one thing and one very, very important thing I want to tell you before you go, the way the market is changing and very, very important, guys, even if you move into cybersecurity, AI will continue to improve. Okay, this is the worst that AI will ever be. AI is only going to get better and better. The market will continue to shrink because of AI. Headcounts are not going to go up. They are going to go down even if you're in cybersecurity, simply because AI is going to take away a lot of the things that we take for granted. Every industry will be impacted along with cybersecurity, but new opportunities are also going to emerge. I'm going to keep monitoring this and keep giving my advice as much as I can, but I want you to understand. So this is, it's a very exciting time to be alive and a very scary time because of how much AI is changing everything. But Provided you keep up with the market, provided you do, you don't have like a defeatist mentality where you think that no, no matter what I do, AI is going to replace me. That's not a good attitude to have. So please keep these things in mind and I guarantee you will have an awesome cybersecurity job soon. Uh, even this one I just saw that even the Shopify, uh, the CEO, they have said that now they want companies to prove, uh, like their employees to prove that if they're asking for headcount, can this thing be done by AI or not? So this is something I forgot to mention before, but this just shows where the market is going, right? Where the market is going and where the mindset of the companies and the CEO. So please think of all these things. AI is very, very terrifying, I know, but it is also one of the biggest opportunities. Provided you learn about AI, you can even start your own company just sitting at home. You can have like a massive company with AI agents doing all your jobs for you. So th there are so many opportunities now emerging because of AI. It's just about changing your mindset and really having a positive forward-looking attitude to AI, to cybersecurity, and the opportunities that are going to come. So I hope this video was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.